corner i was thinking about doing a little talk today about bench presses because uh somebody said to me what's your favorite exercise what is most discussed when you talk to somebody about exercise what do they talk about i think everybody talks about bench presses how much can you bench it's never how much you can press it can't be sometimes or how much you squat or how much you curl it's how much do you bench well when i started bench pressing back at the ymca years ago the bar was not an olympic bar it was some sort of a bent bar that would like rotate when you would try to bench but you had to balance it and it was hard to do but I managed to get my bench up to 300 on that one um, a lot of people would come in I don't know if you've ever seen this but they would um, arch their back so much you'd have to almost scrape their stomach off the ceiling because it was a cheat press and that's not how you bench press that's almost like doing declines but a lot of people do a cheat press and um, not so much now as it did back in those days nowadays they in the bench press contest they have Suits they lift for lifting, you know, it's like a, a compression suit and all that. No, let's do it the old style way like we used to. We used to do, do it a two second pause to the chest and straight up flat on the bench. That's how you had to do it. My best was 455 at the time. Um, I enjoyed bench presses. It was easy for me and I never had a problem with it. I went to the gym one day, I did 315 for 21 reps and I thought, and all these guys were watching, they said, how'd you do that? I said, I don't know, I just did it. All right, so the thing with the bench press is it was my first chest exercise. Then I would go to inclines, either dumbbells or a bar, probably a bar at the time. And then I would do side flies with dumbbells and then cable crossovers. That was my routine for many, many years. And it worked really well. I never varied, it always started with a bench and then the inclines and then on from there. Um, I made a lot of progress, but I don't think that my pec development came from the bench press. My strength did, but not my pec development. So years later, I switched to dumbbell presses starting with the 65s, going to the 80s, going to the 100s, and then the 150s. That's where my pec development came in because you can come down a lot lower with a dumbbell than you can a bar. And you get the whole pec involved and you squeeze to the top as you bring the dumbbells together. See, on the bench you can't bring your hands together. It's straight up and down. So I would say that between the two, the dumbbell presses were actually better. Then I would go to the incline bench and I would do either inclines with Smith Machine a bar or dumbbells but the dumbbells on the incline also worked well it was the same principle as the bench but you're, you're higher up and you're working a little bit more of the upper pec now there's people who don't agree with me Doug Brignoli says it does not work the upper pec but in my case it does work the upper pec because you're at a different angle now declines I threw in at one point um, they actually work pretty well but they're the same principle declines are the same principle of having your body angle like dips if you can do declines, you can do dips, and dips also work the lower pec around the bottom. I was told years ago, make sure you work the lower pec and work the upper pec even more because you don't want your pecs to hang as you get older, because a lot of guys got older pecs did hang. Um, so getting back to what we did, I think the bench was pretty good. I think the dumbbells are better. I think the dumbbell inclines are better, and dumbbell flies, side flies on the bench are really, really good. But if you switch to cable crossovers, you get an even better development because you can bring that cable all the way across your pec. When you cross over, you cross them over. How many people you see doing cable crossovers today and they just push them straight out like a bench? That's not the principle. It is a crossover. Cross the, both ways, this way and then this way, and you'll get the complete pec development from side to side. All right, so that's benches. Dumbbell presses I discussed. I think they're really, really good. But what about machines? Because today gyms are full of machines. They got chest machines, inclines, flat bench, all the kind of stuff. And then they have a pec deck, and then they have all kinds of things you can do without using weights. Well, I've had a few injuries, and I've had a few downtimes in the hospital. So rather than to come back and get the weight in the bar and lose my balance on the bench because my balance was off, I would go to the hammer machine. They had a hammer machine that you could press straight out. I think it's a really good machine. There's another one that you could do that you move with your feet and bring it forward and then you can press for your chest. Hammer also has an incline machine. It's a little bit awkward, but it works pretty well. 
Um, I like to use the two of those together and then I'll go to the pec deck and I'll do the same thing like cable crossovers on the pec deck and I'll do like 12 or 15 reps. So that's a variation of a chest workout. If I see the cables are open and nobody's using them, then I'll do three sets of cable crossovers to finish it off because I think that's a good finishing move. So don't be afraid to use a machine. I think a machine um, can work you pretty well. What you're doing is you're getting muscle resistance from the bar. You're getting the same thing from a machine and you'll get good results with that. So if you want to try something different, try that. Now, also on the hammer machine, I know my son used to work out with me. We used to do the, the pressing on the chest for the regular straight press. Actually, it comes down, I believe, on the hammer machine, and then we would switch off, and in between, we'd elevate our feet on a bench and do push-ups between plates on the floor. Man, you talk about a pump. Oh my God, did that pump your pecs, if you can get in that position. Now, if you have bad shoulders, it's gonna hurt. And uh, Lately, my shoulders have been killing me. I was using a walker for my leg injury, and that walker is like walking on a dip machine. It's just killing my shoulders and my wrists. But doing push-ups in between your pressing, oh my God, that will really, really bring your chest out. A lot of people don't understand that. They don't do it, and they don't see it done, so they don't do it. They usually copy somebody in the gym that does something like that. I put two boxes. I'd elevate my feet on the bench, and I'd do dip or, um, push-ups in between the boxes. This is something you might want to try, but superset it. Now, Supersets are a lost art. Supersets back in the day were the way to train. There was non-stop. You could do a set of benches and you could do a set of flies. If you're not going for a maximum bench, it doesn't matter because you can do the superset and you can get really good pump off that. So you might want to try any one of those exercises and superset with flies and same with inclines, superset it with flies um, and you'll get a massive chest pump. It's unbelievable. You can do this with almost any exercise. You can do it with rowing and one arm rowing or pull downs and rowings. Supersets are really good, and back when I started training years and years and years ago, I would superset bicep and triceps. So you do a set of curls instead of tricep pushdowns. That was also pretty good. You pump your arms from both ends, and they just blow up. It's funny as you get older and you train for years, you don't get the pump you used to. It just doesn't happen like it did when you're a young guy and you just keep pumping all the time. Unless you take something like nitric oxide or super pump or one of those supplements, and then you will if you have. Uh, that in your system when you go to the gym, it will give you a good pump. And also, you need a lot of sleep, you need a lot of food. That'll give you a good pump. But the supersets, don't discount them. They're really, really good. Um, anyway, this is something I wanted to talk about. Make sure you do all your exercises strict. Strict is the best way to get the, the benefit of the muscle. Up and down, work it both ways. Contract at the top and then let it resist very slowly going down. You'll get a lot, a lot of development out of that. Keep your protein high and keep your carbs moderate. You can adjust your carbs the way you look. If you think you're fat, then drop your carbs down. If you don't think you're fat, then use the carbs for energy. It doesn't really matter. You just go by the way your body looks and the way it fits in clothes and all that kind of stuff. Um, okay, that's something I just wanted to talk about and was on my mind today, and I think I wanted to pass that info along because it's good info. I just did an interview for CY Interviews uh, with Chris and Jay, and I do a lot of their shows, and they suggested to me, why don't you do a win a date with Rick on a Friday or Saturday night for dinner or lunch, one of those things. <clears throat> and I said, you know, that's not a bad idea. And the, the, the point of the date is, and this is women, not guys. <laughs> I don't want to date any guys. So uh, we're going to have a contest. I'm not sure what it's going to be, what it's going to be about. But if a woman wins the contest and she lives in Los, she has to live in Los Angeles, because this is where we're going to shoot. We're going to go out on the date and we're going to have them film it and then we're going to use it for the show and then she can be on the show to talk about it. We can have a lot of fun with that. It, it should be pretty cool. So anyway, that's coming up in the future and then I've got other people coming up. Uh, I think Rich Gaspar is going to come back on the show. Uh, Jay Cutler said he'd fly in and do my show and I'm trying to get a lot of people at, after the holidays. Right now it's really hard. It's holiday time and everybody's with their families and enjoying it. So I want to wish you guys happy holidays, uh, happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Be safe, stay off the streets where it's dangerous, and stay tuned for more Rick's Corner. I don't want anything to happen to any of you. You're good people, and I want to keep you alive and well. And by the way, with this uh, injury and this little problem I had, I'm definitely back in the gym. I'm doing pretty good. It's healing up, and I'm feeling better. My energy level's better, and I'm here for you. I'm here for you for the rest of my life, which I hope is a long time. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys, for watching. Thank you for being so supportive. Have a happy holiday and a happy new year, and I love all of you. Stay tuned for more Rick's Corner. See you next time. Hey, everyone. Now you can have the Goals Gym logo drawn by me, the artist Rick Drayson.
personalized and made out to you and signed by me to frame and put on your gym wall or wherever you see fit to do so. It's a piece of bodybuilding history. It will never be duplicated again. It's the largest selling icon t-shirt logo in the world. And I'm the guy that drew it and I will draw it for you. Just go to my website, rickdrazen.com and order there. You can pay through PayPal and it'll be sent out right away. And be sure to watch Rick's Corner for all the videos on bodybuilding, nutrition, fitness, pro wrestling, and anything that suits your interests as far as getting physically fit and being the best you can be from the golden era of bodybuilding. Baby, see you next time.